my God. Good to see you all. It's great to gather as church, isn't it? Yeah, it is great. Yeah, it is. You know, we're the hope, aren't we? He is our hope, and we are the hope out here. I wonder if you're up for being challenged this morning. The answer is yes. That's why we come here, don't we? To build our faith, to build each other up. To hear from God's word. To be challenged. Because otherwise we won't push forward, will we? We like, and I'm just the same as you, I like my comfort. I like things as they are. But actually God's got such great things for us. He wants to move us forward continually. It was, it was you know, we do pray at 9.30 about the service primarily and uh, just as I was driving up I was remem- I was just reminded by the Holy Spirit I'd done some shopping last night I went down to our local store and of course they have a massive arctic on a tiny car park so you know, in my day, it was the Chuckle Brothers, weren't it? It were like, you know, to me, to you, and all that sort of carry on. And they had, but they had a guy actually behind the trailer, and he had a headset on. And he was speaking to the driver. It was just so calm. And, he, you know, as you've seen these guys, and manoeuvred it into such a small area. What am I trying to say? You know, the Holy Spirit wants to speak into you. You might be in tricky situations. You might feel like, well, how am I going to maneuver through this situation? How am I going to maneuver the challenge that God is bringing me? Well, the Holy Spirit will speak in and direct you. And I love my Formula One, and you'll know the drivers, anybody else who watched it, they're getting instructions all the time through the earpieces from the engineers. <clears throat> and it's just a couple of pictures for you to help you this morning as you're listening. Because it's not me that challenges, it's God. And the stuff that I speak will fall away, but the things of the Holy Spirit will stay with you. So try and bear that in mind as we start. Is that okay? Is that okay? Thank you. (laughs) Okay, so we're going to look at communion. As we do the first week of the month. And also I'm going to introduce our new series. You know, we've been through character, haven't we? And I hope that's been helpful. But our new series, we're going to look at the roots of our faith and the fruit that that produces. So part one of that, your speakers, who I hope you appreciate, because they all put great time and effort into bringing the messages. The speakers are going to bring you about how to strengthen your roots. And we're going to look at the book of Ephesians for that. And part two is, sort of mid-May, we'll look at the book of Acts. And we'll see the examples of the fruit that was produced. Roots and fruits. It's a big subject, isn't it? What did Jesus say, John 15? Go and produce fruit that is everlasting. That's our command, isn't it? So we don't have a passive faith, we have an active faith. And we communion, it is always great to celebrate communion. We remember what Jesus did at the cross. We're going to share the bread and the wine and the symbols of his body and his blood that was shed. These are physical symbols to help us, aren't they? Help us remember. And it helps our belief. But in a world of beliefs, and I don't know about you at the moment, it, everything's very Muslim focused, isn't it? Because we're coming to the end of Ramadan. There are many beliefs. Buddhism. You know, <laughs> we live in this me, me society, don't we? And there's all sorts of, wow, ideas in there. It fascinates me. But we need more than a belief, don't we? More, we need an active faith. So I, that's, I don't bring that to sort of condemn anybody. What I'm trying to bring this morning is Jesus has so much more to our life. The thing about being a disciple is 
we have to constantly develop, constantly grow. There's new things for us. But we get in the way of that, don't we? But actually, if we'll just use them steps of faith, God blesses us so much. You've just got to step into his obedience when you hear him and then obedient. He's so faithful. We get so much more than we deserve. Okay. And I think about when we have our roots in Jesus, roots in the Holy Spirit, in the Father, we bear fruit spiritually, don't we? So how does this play out? Let's have a look at uh, our first scripture. So while Apollos was in Corinth, Paul traveled through the interior regions until he reached Ephesus on the coast where he found several believers. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed, he asked them. No, they replied. We haven't even heard there is a Holy Spirit. Then what baptism did you experience, he asked. And they replied, the baptism of John. Paul said John's baptism called for repentance from sin. But John himself told the people to believe in the one who would come later, meaning Jesus. As soon as they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke in other tongues and prophesied. There were about 12 men in all. So we're seeing Paul and obviously Luke records this. So Luke must have been with them and the team and they arrive at Ephesus and they find a people with a belief, don't they? They've obviously had some sort of encounter. But something's off. Something, because Paul starts asking a lot of questions, isn't he? Something's not quite right. Have you received the Holy Spirit, Paul asks. Who is that? We've experienced John's baptism. The baptism that points to Jesus. Let's take it to 2024. People are searching, aren't they, for Jesus. Many people are pointing towards Jesus. We've heard somebody say at Food Bank, I'm searching for a higher power. What he really meant was, he's looking towards Jesus. But people have, they use that kind of language because Jesus isn't common now, is he? He's not taught in Sunday schools anymore. So there's little knowledge and less still of the Holy Spirit, really, if we're honest. Even now, when I came to faith, I very, very little knowledge of the Holy Spirit. But without him, there's no power, is there? Well, this is why we're needed. This is why we're needed to have an active faith to point people to Jesus. And if you've got questions, if ch this church business is all new to you, and you've got questions, grab somebody. Ask questions. It's healthy to ask questions. So let's get back to the text. You know, if we look at verse 5, sorry, which is not, we see that Paul really is explaining this and he preaches it. These people then heard the gospel, didn't they? They believed. What a challenge for us. I think it can be argued they've at that point put their roots into Jesus. They started a transformation. They started to believe. And verse 6 says they received the Holy Spirit fruit immediately tongues and prophecy and this is what the Holy Spirit outworking that is going to give us does give us but more and more if we're going to be different in our belief we have to use that power when did Jesus really get powerful when the Holy Spirit came on him didn't he that's when he really started his ministry And this isn't a sort of condemning sort of thing. That power is there for us. We, the 
outside world needs us to grab it for all it's worth. Really get to know. When we have our roots deep into Jesus, we get that fruit, don't we? It's what makes us different. So that's a good start, isn't it? It, it? That's a good start for these people. But actually, when we go into Ephesians 1, Paul is now writing to a, a growing church, isn't he? Possibly the same people are there, but actually they developed. So he's writing and encouraging to put their roots down deeper, isn't he? And I'm just going to put some pointers on that because we're time limited this morning. You know, this will unfold as different speakers come. This is really the root of it. See what I did there? <laughs> so, okay, next scripture. Spiritual blessings. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because... We are united with Christ. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family to bring us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son, he is so rich in kindness and grace that he has purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. He has showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. See, when we looked at our first scripture, that's great, isn't it? There's a, a renewal, a reborn. People are making commitments. Actually, we're looking at something deeper now. This is what I want to challenge us with this morning. This is what I want to challenge myself with, actually, that we go deeper. And this is what Paul is writing to Ephesians, isn't he? He's straight out of the box, Paul, isn't he? Every time, bang, right into what they need. And, of course, it's right what we need as well in 2024. You know, I don't apologize for this because this is my job as your pastor, isn't it? To stir you up. And that's good, isn't it? He wants to die empty. He wants to die knowing that we've stretched this life right out, haven't we? Squeezed everything from it in Jesus. That's the aim. Okay, so a couple of quotes from Paul, from the scripture, and then one from Jesus himself. So verse 3, the roots of being united with Christ, that fruit that comes is because the Father has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. The Father has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. When we're praying, our prayers go to heaven, don't they? Straight to Jesus. And then come back and affect our lives. We're blessed. That's just one example of the heavenly realms. When we're encouraging people, it's a spiritual act. It has more of an effect because we're different, because we're in Christ. It's fruit produced from roots. Verse 5, we're adopted into Christ's family. We see this in the book of Acts. Spiritual gifts, gifts to build each other up. Roots in him to produce fruit. That we bless one another. We help each other grow. We ask questions of one another. No question is too silly to ask ever. It's the first thing you learn on an Alpha course. You see, because the, the rub of this is we still have to work at it. God doesn't do everything. We don't get all these things showered on us and then we become superhuman, although we do. We have to work at it as well. Paul, it says, 
I had a lecture hall. And he, he was thrown out of the synagogue where he worked for a year, and then he, he hired a lecture hall. And while everybody else was having a siesta in the afternoon, because don't forget, we're in a Mediterranean climate, Paul was lecturing, teaching. So there's still a part for us to play to transform our communities, to transform each other's Feeling challenged? And I'll finish my last point. The words of Jesus himself. John 15, 26. I will send you an advocate of the spirit of truth. He will come to you from the Father and he will testify about me. And you must also testify about me because you have been with me from the beginning of my ministry. Did you know that a function of the Holy Spirit actually is to increase your knowledge and relationship with Jesus Christ himself? See, the Trinity is reciprocal, isn't it? Because you know, when I've been speaking, you might think, well, where am I supposed to put my roots? I'm supposed to put my roots in Jesus or the Father or actually all three. They all have a function. Same God, different functions, all for you. What a gift. And when we increase that relationship, when we increase that knowledge of him, there's more fruit. Always more fruit. The roots are going down deep. See, I'll sum up by this. How will people know we're followers of Jesus? How are we going to be different from other beliefs? It's because God is active in us. No other faith has that. No other faith, belief. It is God within us. That is the gift that we have. Supernaturally, there's a difference when you're kind and gracious in the Holy Spirit. It speaks into the person's heart. God is drawing this community to us. We see it. In different people turning up at services. This is not normal. This is God's gracious act to us and our role is to encompass them within our church community our family and disciple people so that they carry on that good news I've had a life of selling fruit anybody who knows me will know that I've sold, I was thinking it up actually, millions of pounds of fruit actually, my family business 58 years, a lot of fruit so, as I sometimes tell people when they annoy me, I've forgotten more than you know. <laughs> yeah? So you learn a few things about fruit when you're in the fruit game. <laughs> it goes without saying, really, doesn't it? Actually, people are looking for flavor. That's what sells fruit. When we used to get things on sample plates, if they taste it and it's got flavor, they buy it every time. Every time. See, when we, what I'm trying to do is, what God wants us to do is to reach maturity. What's maturity bring when your roots are going down? It brings flavor. Mm -hmm. And it's irresistible to people. Because they say, what's different about this person? I, I, I can't work it out. And that's the beauty of it. I want to challenge you. Like the people in Ephesus. Who is the Holy Spirit to you? But actually I want to get to know the Holy Spirit more and more. He's a person. He has a personality. That's often my prayer. I want to know you so much, Holy Spirit. Because if somebody's been sent to us, surely it's rude not to use him, not to talk to him, not to work with him, not to listen and be obedient. That is our job as disciples. See, when the Ephesians, they heard that gospel, that Jesus had died on a cross, 
that they were forgiven. They believed and obeyed. And I just want to challenge, I felt this morning as well, a challenge is maybe somebody wants to get baptized. You know, we have a baptism tank beautifully built into our building. So if that's you, come and see somebody afterwards. Because actually, when often when you're baptized, it's a two for one. You get the Holy Spirit as well. <laughs> Turned into the fruit salesman again. <laughs> <laughs> see, as we come into communion, what when you get to know Jesus more and the Holy Spirit, the cross just opens up into such a magnificent one. Although it was gruesome and horrific, it opens up to so much. You know, when we have a belief, it can just become a repeat. But I want to pray this morning, as I finish now, a revelation, a challenge for your lives. Because we're well ahead of the curve, so as they say, but actually there's more. We shouldn't settle that we're growing and think, oh, well, yeah, this is good. We'll just go with it. Jesus always has more, so much more. Lord Jesus, thank you. <clears throat> thank you for dying on the cross and leaving us with your Holy Spirit. I pray for every one of us this morning we'll just find some new soil, put our roots down further, some nutrients for our lives, Lord so that we can understand more of what you did, Lord Jesus. It's just such an awesome, wonderful privilege to know you, but we want to know you more and more, and I pray that this morning. And I just ask it in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen.